you are welcome in the name of Jesus Christ. I count it a great privilege bringing the first word to us in this morning session, in this Easter conference with the theme, Serving God Makes Stars. Say with me, Serving God Makes Stars. I want to hear a resounding one. Serving God makes stars. Revelation chapter 22 and verse 16. Revelation chapter 22 and verse 16. It says, I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David, and the bright and morning stars, and the bright and morning star. I have come to testify this unto you. I am the root and the offspring of David, the bright and the morning star. And the good news is this. As the Father has sent him, the same way he has sent us. So if you are a child of God indeed, you are also a bright and a morning star. As his Father has sent him, so also he has sent us. Father has sent him as a bright and a monist. I said, I have come to testify. You also, you will testify as a star in the name of Jesus Christ. I said, you will testify as a star in the name of Jesus Christ. Jesus has come to testify to us as a star. And not just a star, but a bright one. And not just a bright one, but a morning star. To every human being, when you look into the firmament now, in this early morning, can you see the star? In the morning, when you look into the sky, can you see the, the star? But when you look into the sky at night, you will see the star. But the power of the Lord, the testimony of Jesus Christ for you as a star. He said you are not a star that will only be noticed in the night. But you are a star that will be noticed right from the morning. A bright and a morning star. That is when the people look up to you as a star, even in the morning time, they will see you shining. I don't know if somebody can hear me. They will see your brightness in the name of Jesus Christ. He said you are not a star that will only shine or be only noticed only at your night season. There are different seasons in the life of a man. There is the morning season, there is an afternoon season, there is a night season. Somebody sent something to me a few days ago and was sharing the stages of life. And it described one as the baby stage. It described another time as a time of being a toddler. It described another one. As a, as a time that you are, it's a schooling time. And it describes another one as a decision age. And it describes another set of age, ages as an age where you are already saying bye-bye to the world. That is the nice stage. But the word of God is saying to you that so the people of the world, stars may not be noticeable in the daytime, but in your own daytime, 
as a star, you will be noticeable. You will shine. Because as the Father has sent him, so also he is sending you. The Father sent him as a bright and a morning star. So you are also sent as a bright and a morning star. It's just like a 75-year woman just obtaining old level. What does she want to use it for? Just as decoration and achievement for life. If at my age now, I'm just writing jam. I don't know what testimony will be like that. Somebody at the age of 75 just bought a bicycle. That is the first mobility um, material in his life. And he wrote on the bicycle, on the bicycle, we are just in the morning. Arolawa. When will he gather money to buy motorbike? When will he gather money to now buy? I don't know the smallest of the vehicle now. Probably Camry. Amen. <laughs> Glory be to God. When will that testimony be established in his life? But God is saying to you, your testimonies will no longer be delayed. I say your testimonies shall no longer be delayed. It will be a testimony that will shine early in your lifetime in the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody say with me, I'm a bright and a morning star. I am a bright and a morning star. And that will be your testimony in the name of Jesus Christ. I said that will be your testimony in the name of Jesus Christ. In this first world, we'll be looking at the teaching, serving God is a choice. Serving God is a choice. Joshua chapter 24 and verse 15. Serving God is a choice. Joshua chapter 24 and verse 15. He says, and if, it's, if it seems evil unto you to serve the Lord. He says, choose you this day whom ye will serve. He said, whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites, in whose land ye dwell. Somebody say with me, but as for me. Shout it loud and clear, but as for me. And my house, we will serve the Lord. Say it once again, but as for me. And my house, we will serve the Lord. That is what makes serving God a choice. He said, choose ye this day. Hear this. Becoming a star is birthright of every child of God. Say it with me. It's my birthright to become a star. Say it with all conviction. It's my birthright to become a star. Are you afraid to be a star? Are you afraid to be a star? Say it is my birthright to be a star. Because God has ordained it to be so. He says, I am a bright and a morning star. And as the Father has sent him, so also he has sent you. So it's your birthright to be a star. But just like in every provision of redemption, there are things to do to actualize them. Every provision of redemption, there are things to do to actualize those provisions. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 1. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 1. It said, it will only come to pass. It shall only come to pass. I have a provision for you. 
I have so many things in stock for you. I have ordained you to be a star to your world. But it shall only come to fulfillment on the premise that if you will diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, there is a part you need to play in order for that birthright to be accessible and actualized in your life. There is a role you need to play for that promise, for that birthright to be actualized in your life. Becoming a star is your birthright, but there are provisions that you need to meet. There are conditions that you need to meet in order to emerge, in order to actualize them. If you will diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord your God to observe and to do all these commandments which I have commanded thee this day, he said, then the Lord your God will set thee on high. You will shine among multitude. You will be able to stand out among multitude on the ground that if you will hearken, if you will obey my instruction, then sky is not your starting point. It, 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 it's not your end. Sky is your starting point. If you will care to obey my instruction, if you will care to hearken to my instruction, sky is not your limit. Sky becomes your starting point. I will set thee on high. Above all nations of the earth. Say with me, sky is not my limit. Say it loud and clear, sky is not my limit. Sky is my starting point. There are provisions that you need to meet in order to actualize this these commandments of the Lord. John chapter 14 and verse 21. John chapter 14 and verse 21. He said, he that had my commandment and keepeth it. He said, he it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my father. And I will love him and will manifest myself. I will manifest myself unto him. I will be the glory round about him. I will be the glory round about her. I will reveal myself. I will manifest myself unto him. If you are able to obey my commandment, if you are able to follow my instructions, we have the right to be empowered, for instance, Yet, there are things to do to be empowered. We have the right to be empowered as a child of God. But there are things to do to be empowered. Isaiah chapter 58 and verse 6. Isaiah chapter 58 and verse 6. It says, it's not this the fast that I have chosen. So the pathway to empowerment is the first. This is the first that I have chosen. It said for you to be able to lose the ban of wickedness around your life. For you to be able to say a stop to the activity of hell around your life. For you to be able to walk over the devil around your life. It said this is the provision. Is this is the first that I have chosen. To lose the bands of wickedness. You have gone that same mountain long enough. You have been kept on the same spot long enough. He said, is it not this the fast that I have chosen? To lose the bands of wickedness. To undo the heavy burden. You have been carrying some burdens on your head that looks as if 
where am I heading to? You are at a point, at a crossroad that looks as if where am I heading to? He said, you have the access to lose those heavy burdens from your life if you will be able to do this command. And that is the provision of fast. I have given you the provision of fast in order to undo the heavy burden. And to let the oppressed go free. Many are depressed because they have been oppressed by the devil. He said, you want to be free from that oppression. This is my provision. Engage in the fast. It doesn't just come free. He said, this kind goeth not except by prayer and fasting. That is the provision of God for you to be delivered from every oppressions of the devil. Luke chapter 11 and verse 13. He has provided that great gift unto you. He has delivered those great gifts into your life. He said, if ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children. He said, how much more shall your heavenly father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask. That is, you want to be empowered, you need to ask for it. You want to be empowered, you need to fast your way into it. Those are the provisions for empowerment. The same way we have been redeemed to prosper in life. You have been redeemed to be enriched in life. But we must align with the covenant of prosperity if you will see prosperity answer in your life. Deuteronomy chapter 8 and verse 18. He said, the Lord is the one that giveth the power to get wealth. He's the one that giveth the, he said, but thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth the power to get wealth. And until you connect with that power, it will be impossible to assess the power to, be, to prosper in life. And what is that engagement? He said, why the earth remaineth? Seed time and harvest. That is the provision. Seed time and harvest shall not cease. Genesis chapter 8 and verse 22. Seed time and harvest shall not cease. If you will engage the covenant platform. If you will engage the covenant platform, all things will work together for your good. In the same way, we are redeemed as stars. But for you to be able to emerge a star to your world, serving God is the covenant platform to actualize this. You want to emerge as a star to your world, serving God is the covenant platform to actualize your stardom. Philippians chapter 2, from verse 5 to 11. Philippians chapter 2, from verse 5 to 11. The Bible is speaking, Philippians chapter 2, from verse 5 to 11. When you engage that covenant, then it says, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ. And what is the mind? Verse 6. It said, Who being in the form of God, though uh, and taught it not robbery to be equal with God. Verse 7. But made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of man. Verse 8. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. And what happened? He said, wherefore, God also has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every other name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. Uh, uh, that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord to the glory of, the, of God the Father. Before he could get that name, the scripture says he humbled himself. He served 
his way. To become the renowned star, he served his way. He took the form of a servant. He took it, he took it not as robbery. Even being a God to equate himself as a God. But took the fashion of a servant and humbled himself. And he served his way to the top. The pathway to the top is service. You want to emerge as a star to your world. Then you serve your way there. That is the covenant platform to actualize your stardom in destiny. And not just only that, leading many to the kingdom also makes the stars of the redeemed. You want to emerge as a star to your world, you serve your way to the top and you lead many to Christ. Proverbs chapter 11 and verse 30. Proverbs chapter 11 and verse 30. It says, the fruit of the righteous is a tree of life. And he that winneth soul is what? Is what? Is wise. And what will become the people that are wise? Daniel chapter 12 and verse 3. It says, the wise will inherit. It says, and they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. And they that turn many to righteousness as what? As stars forever and ever. Not a star that will shine today and you will not see them tomorrow. He said a star forever and ever. Those that turn many to unto righteousness. So leading many to the kingdom make the stars of the redeemed. When you are a productive vine, when you are a fruitful field, you emerge as a star to your world. And this cannot be enforced unto anyone. It's a choice. And that is why serving God is a choice. It's not by force. It cannot be enforced on you. It's a choice. And it's a choice of the wise that you must consciously enter into. Understand this. Serving God is neither a gift nor a calling. Serving God is a choice. Matthew chapter 21 and verses 28 to 30. Matthew chapter 21 and verses 28 to 20. You see a very funny story there. He said, but what think he? A certain man had two sons. And he came to the first and said, son, go walk in my, today in my vineyard. And he answered and said, I will not. But afterward, he repented and he went. Verse 30. And verse 30. And he went to the second. He came to the second and said, likewise. And the second, he answered, I go, sir. And went not. That is the action of many in the kingdom. I go, sir. I go, sir. I go, sir. So respectful, even in his response, but in his heart, full of disobedience. He said, ah, I go, sir. But he went not. Verse 31, please. Verse 31 of that same scripture. He said, whether of them twain did the will of his father, they say unto him, the first. He first said, the first one said, I'm not going, but he had a rethink and said, I will go. And he went. But the second one, he gladly obliged to the father, oh, I will go, sir. But he never went. I service. That is what makes serving God a choice and not a force. And until you choose to serve God from the depth of your heart, 
the star in you cannot shine. But I pray for somebody today, the star in you will burst forth in the name of Jesus Christ. I said the star in you is coming forth right now in the name of Jesus Christ. An individual make a choice to serve or not to serve. Every individual will always make that choice to serve or otherwise. He said, choose you this day. The one who you will serve. But I don't know about you, he said, but as for me, that is my personal choice. And my house, we will serve the Lord. Nobody can make this choice on your behalf. Nobody can make this choice for you. It's a personal thing that you need to make for yourself in order for you to emerge the star that the Lord has made you to be. No matter how much you love anybody, you can't go to the toilet on, be, on the behalf of somebody. Can you say, oh, Jesu Shelgun is my good friend. He's very busy with student council activity. And he's pressed. He wants to go to the toilet. Let me go to the toilet on his behalf. Is that possible? And when you want to go to the toilet, you say, I want to go and ease myself. That is nobody can ease life on your behalf. You are the one that will consciously ease life for yourself. No one can ease life on your behalf. No matter how much your parent loves you. No matter how much your sibling may love you, nobody can run the race of life for you. You will run the race, no matter how wobble your leg may look like, you will run it by yourself. He said, know ye not that everyone that runneth in the race, run all. He said, but only one obtain the prize. He said, so run. Not that they will run on your behalf. So run so that you can obtain the price. After this conference, somebody is imagined as a prize winner in the name of Jesus Christ. If that looks like you, let your amen show it right now. If that looks like you, let your amen show it right now. If that looks like you, let your amen show it right now. But a choice to serve does not even entitle anyone to reward. But engaging in service is what does. It's not enough to make that choice. Some people can make the choice, oh, I begin to serve God now. But as soon as they cross back to their hostel, they call them for the unit fellowship. I will join you. Oh, I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm coming. And they we go nowhere. It's not enough to make the choice, but you must engage. That is what guarantees the reward. Matthew chapter 7 and verses 24 to 25. Matthew chapter 7 verse 20. It said, therefore, whosoever heareth this saying of mine and doeth them, it's not enough to hear it. You must engage in it. It is your action that determines its activities in your life. Your personal action that will determine if God will be active or passive in your life. You want God to be active for you, then you need to be active for God. Whatsoever a man so, what will happen? That is what, if you are active for God, God will be active for you. And if you are passive for God, there is no how much you call, sing that song, pass me not the gentle save. It will pass. It will pass. And not just pass, it will be passive. That is, it will pass, and when evil is coming, it won't take note. That is passive. But that will not be your portion in the name of Jesus Christ. Evil will not come near you in the name of Jesus Christ. That is why you need to engage actively. You need to be active in the things of the kingdom. God does not reward our choice. He only rewards our labor 
which validate our choice. It's not enough to make a choice. God will only reward your labor that validates your choice. It says in every labor there is reward. First Corinthians chapter 3, verses 6 to 8. And first John chapter 3, verses 15 to 18. Only laborers are entitled to reward. Not leaders. Not founders. Not mentors. Not teachers. People may engage you as disciples. There is no reward there. It is only laborers that are rewarded. I see the reward of the Lord answering in your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Because there is nothing in doing nothing. Zero minus zero. Zero minus zero. Even zero times zero. Answer me now, you are students. Zero times zero. So there is nothing in doing nothing. You cannot gain anything when you are not doing anything. There is nothing in doing nothing. Life in the kingdom is an adventure of seed time and harvest. You want to emerge as a star to your world. Then you need to serve your way to the top. Said, when we sow sparingly, we reap sparingly. And when we sow bountifully, we reap bountifully. Second Corinthians chapter 9. From verse 6 to 8. And understand there is nothing extraordinary on its own. It is man's extraordinary input that make it so. You want to emerge extraordinary to your world. Then you need to impute your service in the kingdom. If you must see what you have never seen before, then we must be ready to do what you have never done before. You might have been serving him, but God is giving you a new call from above to serve him better in order to emerge greater in life. Galatians chapter 6 and verses 7 to 9. Galatians chapter 6 and verses 7 to 9. It says, be not deceived. God is not mocked. Let's read the following line together. Rise to your feet. 